Okay, so welcome back. I'm back with some grammar tips, as in, let's start. So first of all, let's uh, see the difference between these two ways of writing this term, God with a capital G and God with a cursive G. The basic difference between the two is that when you use the first one, you're referring to the invisible. As in, you have seen that many, um, you know, religions have this uh, terminology where there's a pro where there's a prophet who's referring to someone, so that someone is capital G O D, who who is not seen, who is omnipresent, who is everywhere, and all that, uh, whatever. And then comes God with a cursive G. These are actually uh, prophets. And uh, for instance, every um, you know religion has certain prophets. Maybe I cannot take names, as in I don't want anyone to uh, mind this or that. So prophets, as in the as in the you know the formations of God that have taken place in the world, and that they are in the stories and all. As in, okay, I'm taking a name, Lord Rama, maybe um, Muhammad and all. So you can say God is everywhere if you want to say that, as if you are referring to the invisible power, the omnipotent, the omnipresent. God is everywhere. But if you want to refer to a physical form of God, uh, an incarnation that was there at a time, you must be using the second version with the cursive G. So, God is not with me while I'm making this video. So, So that way, as in God is everywhere. And then suppose I have to refer to a physical form of God, I would say perhaps Lord Rama was a Hindu God. So when you refer to prophets, when you refer to the physical forms, it's just as common as the word boy, um, linguistically. Fine. And then, as in this the almighty with uh, the A capitalized, it's again used for the God that is everywhere, the omnipresent. So the A should be capitalized always. So God or God, God is everywhere. Lord Rama was a Hindu God, the Almighty. It's the same as God, this one. Let's have a quick, let's have a quick spelling check and move. This is just repetition, maybe. Then there's this thing called dangling modifier. A dangling modifier doesn't know what to modify and it creates confusion as in when someone reads it, as in the whole sentence. And if the sentence has a dangling modifier, then you have to, you know, clarify things better. For instance, if I write when only a child my brother took me to a fair. Now, I don't know whether 
my brother is a child or was a child this can be a case or it may be that me is the child so you do not know you have confusion as in when only a child refers to which person so in such cases you can always clarify things these are actually very very important for the second criterion in writing uh, coherence and cohesion where things should be logical af so when only a child my brother took to me to uh, brother took me to a fair we do not know who was a child so we can write this version when i was only a child my brother took me to a fair now it's clarified that there is only one child here i hope it's clear then remember some nouns are always plural as in you do not have the singulars and uh, some examples are written in front of you police people scissors spectacles outskirts premises savings premises savings savings account not saving account and then as in just uh, as a side note i've written two other kinds of nouns one of them is always uncountable i wear and one of them is of the sort that its singular version is the same as its plural version innings the match thing as in suppose you have um, one you would say it was a great innings then three also three innings so the singular version is just uh, as the plural version is then a common mistake that's done as in people or peoples remember people is plural in itself so you do not have to worry about uh, thinking about its uh, plural version but as in when you have to refer to types as in suppose indians and chinese then you can then you have to use peoples suppose you are just referring to the you are just referring to the human race then you will write people all over the world you do not have to be very um, you know plural in that sense but suppose you have to differentiate one kind of people from another then you would say um two uh, indian and chinese peoples or the peoples you can use peoples in that way when i say people around the world i am actually referring to everyone as a human when i say peoples around the world i am differentiating between the uh, nationalities and all ethnicities and all who or whom uh, remember who is always a subject whether it's used uh, in a question or maybe as a relative pronoun to refer to something additional or important in between a sentence who is a subjective thing and whom is always an objective phenomenon phenomenon so you know the subject is the one okay i'm going to speak in layman terminology this thing is not actually the best definition ever but still as in someone who is doing the work subject someone who is receiving the action <clears throat> is the object so in that sense also if you refer to something of either category you can use uh, the appropriate uh, word from these two so suppose i have to say tum kon ho so i'm referring to the existence of the person as in who has the existence so i'm talking to the subject so who are you but suppose i have to ask this that uh, i'm asking about the person he wants to meet so he's going to do the action meeting and wants also so in that case i'm referring to someone upon whom the action is going to be done as in the meeting action and all so i'm referring to the object so in that case whom should be there so whom do you want to meet the same is the case here this is called a relative clause in purely grammatical terms but fuck that
Now, in such a case, whether to use who, whom, or what, whose I have not introduced in this video, and uh, that's just my wish. <clears throat> See, you should be considering that whatever you're referring uh, you know, to, what action it will play in this part is going to be the decider, uh, is going to be the deciding factor for your choice of the pronoun. As in, suppose you have this uh, part standalone, Now, if I, you know, who refers to he here that we all know? So who he, who is your son is good. So we know that uh, he is being referred to by using who. So if I write he here, what role will it play? It's gonna be the subject. So since it's gonna be a subject, I will write the subject for now, that's all. Now, if I write, if I see this thing, whom I like, as in I'm doing the action, so, and the person who is being liked, which is very awkward actually right now, um, he is going to be the object of this part. As in, suppose I say, I like Sam. Now guess the sex of Sam, male or female. So if I write this as a standalone entity, so it's I who is the subject. You know, actually, you know, the correct uh, grammatical version is it is I who am the subject, but fuck it again. So I like I is the subject here because I'm one, I'm the one who am doing the action or not an action, but uh, that's why I said who does the action is not the actual definition of uh, uh, this thing subject, but so. This whom refers to Sam here. So we are talking about the thing or the person uh, who is actually the receiver here. So we are referring to the object. So we'll use the objective case here. So he whom I like is Sam. Now let's come to something uh, often erroneous again. The difference between these two things, IT a post office, and ITS. Remember, <clears throat> this IT a post office, inequality has two meanings.
and they are it is and it has to use you know which one it's all about the conventions it's no rocket science so you have to say it is a car you know it is article and noun noun means name so here it is a, a car so it's a car so it is its article noun is it's done it is done so it's v3 is it's going it is going so you, you cannot say it has going. So V1 ING is, remember, as in when you have to use IT post office in the sense of it has, it should be accompanied by a V3 afterward, as in you cannot write this as in one second, let me have a dubba. you can say okay this will confuse you a bit one sec so you can say it's eaten my food it has eaten my food but you cannot say, if you want to say it has food, you cannot write it food. That will actually get translated into um, it is food. So be careful. And when you have to refer to the possession, as in when suppose you have to say, like we say my car, and you know for uh, animals we use it. So if you have to refer to um, the bone of a dog, so you, so you can say it's bone, ITS bone. This one. This is the possessive. Now some common errors as in miscellaneous. <laughs> I think all my videos are otherwise miscellaneous also, but it's sub, -mis sub miscellaneous maybe. <clears throat> Do not use an as after consider. He's considered bad, not he's considered as bad. The examiner will kick your ass. Someone is promoted to manager, as in suppose I am clerk, I'm a clerk and I've been given this responsibility now, you know, of being a manager. So I would say I have been promoted to manager. Do not use an as after elected also. He has been elected president, not as president. Uh, this boon, as in a God skipped, uh, it should be followed by two. We actually write, uh, as in what I've seen generally is uh, boon, uh, boon of life maybe, boon two. Uh, as in, I, I remember a sentence. Um, is a boon of humanity maybe someone had written. Okay, remember it's a boon two, uh, always. 
So see these three structures. These are very uh, interesting. So when you start, let's suppose you hated someone. So you you know you wanted his house to burn, and burn down actually. So when you went there and uh, you know threw the kerosene all over, and then you lit it, lit the house. So you started a fire. Don't forget the article here. Now, when you did that, the house was set on fire. As in when there is something that is burning, you say it is on fire. And suppose there's something that is placed over a burning you know, material. Suppose this thing. So, uh, this is barbecue, okay, and it has flames right now. So, suppose you put something on it, as in suppose a cooker or something. Since the cooker is not burning, it's actually on, you know, flames. You will, uh, in this case, you will use on a fire. The cooker is on a fire. If you used uh, the cooker is on fire, you would be meaning that it has caught. Uh, fire and it is burning now. So that is something different. That's an accident. This is a cooking process. The difference between cricket and a cricket, as in, if you say cricket, you refer to the game. If you if you say a cricket, you are referring to the insect. And mostly I've seen that people uh, do not use the required preposition with uh, this word provide. So I provided him maybe a car. This is wrong. I have, I provided him with a car, so do not forget with. Then sometimes you do not know some secondary meanings of some words. For instance, play. We all know that I'm playing football. So when we re when we write something of the sort, India is playing Pakistan. So play is used in that sense also when we refer to two opponents or maybe more than two. So India plays. Remember when you use a country's name, this will be two points then. One thing. Ram plays Sham. This would mean that uh, Ram is playing against Sham. You know many meanings of this word second, but you might not know this one. When you second something, you support it, a cause or something. I second your opinion, I support your opinion. Apprehend, the common meaning is that uh, you expect something. I apprehended a guest. It's mostly used for something negative, but guests are negative also. I apprehended an accident or something maybe. But it's it also means that uh, someone has been, you know, imprisoned or someone has been arrested actually. So arrest. Buy again, you know, purchase, but uh, it's also support. Or you actually believe, yeah, believe would be fine. I buy what you have said, I believe what you have said. Duck, not no quack quack here. A duck is actually used as a term of, ad, uh, you know, adoration also. Suppose I'm referring to a girl. And I have to say, as in, I have to talk to her with love, as in, it's it's a term of love. Oh, my duck.
Then the last point for today, as in the difference between the ING version and the ED version. Remember when you use the ING version, it again refers to the doer. As in, okay, let's take an example that will make it easier. So I should write here, do a Receiver Suppose there are two uh, siblings There's no sadness in MS PowerPoint. So suppose this is the person who is actually annoying, who is actually disturbing someone. So he's disturbing, as I said, and this person has been disturbed. So suppose you refer to a nation who's doing something. So you would say uh, maybe, okay, not doing something, but suppose a nation is actually undergoing development. So you can say this is a developing nation because it's in the process. But if something has actually developed, as I said, ED version. So this is disturbing the doer. ING thing. Because of the disturbing person, this person is now disturbed or annoying, annoyed. Fine, I think, I hope it was useful. Bye.